Good afternoon. Welcome to Marty's Tying Bench. This afternoon I'm putting together kits for this week's Vice Squad and the pattern I've chosen is a 20-incher stonefly pattern. I first learned of this and started fishing it many years ago on the Roaring Fork with good success and it travels well. Anytime you need a little more imitative stonefly than a Pat's Rubber leg, for instance but you don't want to go through all the trouble of making it anatomically perfect. This is a good pattern, a quick tie. I'm tying this one in a size 10. You can tie it bigger or smaller. Stoneflies live a couple of years, so they can be many different sizes. I'm going to weight this one with 10 turns of .020 lead. And if you were tying a beaded version, you'd slide that up into the bead right now. But I want to tie this one plain, a little shallower water stone flying. I'll build a little bit of a thread dam, and then with my thumbnail, push the lead up against it so the lead's, oh, maybe an eye length behind the actual eye. And then jump the thread back behind and build another dam. That'll hold it in place. I don't feel I got to cover the lead with thread because the dubbing will cover it fine and I'll be making more wraps on it later in the fly so for speed's sake let's just do that. Now the tail is going to be goose biots. This one is a tan but you can use golden stone, you can use brown, just about anything you want. The biots that work the best seem to be out there towards the tip. They're a little skinnier, a little easier to get to splay. What I'm going to do is get them even in my fingers. They're both still curved the same direction up. I'll switch fingers and get it ready. And spin my thread round. And then as I make these turns towards the back, that will spin it even tighter, just a natural wrapping motion and right before I get to the bend of the hook I'm going to lay these two on my side and come across with the thread gently until it swings them up on top and there are your divided tails. Now these are known in some circles as evil biots and I understand that you can struggle with them a long time but give this technique a try the first time it works for you it'll won't take as long for the second successful set and next thing you know you'll be quick at it. Okay for a rib the pattern calls for a tan floss. I got two strands of it here. If it gets unruly just rub it across your tongue. Get it damp. body is peacock and judging by the quality of the peacock uh, judging the quality of the peacock will determine how many strands you need this stuff is eh, modest so I'm going to use a fair number I've got six or seven in here And I'm going to wrap my thread up to the lead. Now you see the lead is a little bit forward of the halfway mark on the hook shank. And that's a good place for the transition from the abdomen to the thorax. I've built up just a little bit of taper. And wrap the peacock forward. Now I'm going to get plenty of extra security wraps here so that tips of that peacock don't come loose. Now as I wrap the rib I'm going to twist the floss so 
So that shows through pretty distinctly. I don't want it to sink into the peacock. And just I don't want it to sink in so far that it disappears, I mean to say. So, so there we go. Now, for a wing case, you could use thin skin, but I'm going to use the natural material called for in the original. This is a turkey tail fiber, tail feather. And you can see I've been cutting little strips out. They don't need to be very wide. They need to be somewhat slender. And you'll see why when I fold it over. I'm going to set that on the top of the hook and pinch it down with my thumb. And come over with a loose wrap so that that's right on top and it's evenly spread and not too bunched up. Now, this is a little farther forward than I want my transition, so I'm going to go ahead and overlap back up into the peacock a little bit. For the leg material, <clears throat> the original called for partridge, and I'm using partridge but not the feather they're really talking about. I found these these are up there on the shoulders, got a nice white stripe down the middle that disappears when you tie them in. But this is uh, this will let you get a lot more use out of that pheasant, or excuse me, partridge neck. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the fuzzy part, and then with my fingers I'm going to gently coax these apart. And these are going to be my legs. And to measure it, I want the length of the stem that has fibers on it to be pretty much from, from here to where you're going to tie it off. Now I can just switch this around on my fingers. And tie it in at the back of those two index points. And let's trim that out of the way, at least short enough that it won't get into the eye. And build a little bit of a taper. So now I've got legs that are going to fold over, and in a wing case it's going to fold over. But I want to dub the thorax with a lighter color dubbing. This is a hairline dubbing hair's ear. You can use rabbit, you can use hair's ice, you could use ice dub. But most of the original ones I fished had just natural hairs here. Now we need to build up a little bit of bulk on the thorax. Just a tad more. There we go, almost done. Now we're going to fold the feather over. and tie it in right behind the eye. Then the wing case comes over. <clears throat> we'll get tied in right on top of that. Now I'm going to get in there and trim that as close as I can. Bind down any little butts with a few more wraps before I switch to the whip finish. And head cement would be a good idea here. I'll dispense with it to save a little time at the moment, but try to 
thread. If you want to, you can take a toothbrush and brush the dubbing out a little bit. There you have it, 20 inch stone.